Welcome back everybody. Today I'm back with an interesting one. This is what I would say is probably the smallest toaster oven I've ever seen and that is the Dash Mini Toaster Oven. Now is a toaster oven this size even practical? Let's find out in today's review. So last night I unboxed it and here's how that went. I bought this on clearance for about 15 bucks at a Target. It usually runs about $20 on Amazon where it's pretty popular and an Amazon's choice. Almost looks like a CD case here. I'm assuming that's the instructions. I'll read that over. All right, here it is. And the claims that it's a mini toaster oven for bagels, toast, pizza, or even cookies. Its small size makes it more efficient than using a full size oven. Includes a baking tray and rack. Also has a timer and auto shut off feature. Looks like we've got some, uh, some toast settings on there. Now on Amazon, a lot of people like it. Some people say the small size, say it's good for making toast or bagels while praising the price. A lot of people use the word cute to describe it. Now the biggest complaint on Amazon I saw people talking about was the size, saying it's too small to really make more than a slice of toast or half a bagel. Some people point out there's no temperature setting, so it's easy to burn items quickly. I should also point out that most people on Amazon seem to be using this for some type of bread, so I'll probably focus on that. First of all, there's a heating element inside, and they refer to it as being fragile, so you have to be really careful around that. They also say that not to make toast more than four minutes or it'll burn. They've got a couple different settings here. Basically two, three, and four minutes are light, medium, and dark. They say it's not good for meat or poultry or anything uncooked really. So mainly it's gonna be for bread, maybe warming up some leftovers, that's about it. But it's very small. Maybe look at the size of my, my hand looks giant next to this thing. Something kind of funny I noticed in the instructions, they have a recipe ideas here, which is kind of cool. So they have got seven recipes, but six of them are just a matter of making toast and then after it's done, putting something on top of it. So they are recipes, but most of the recipes aren't really done in the unit itself. All right, so let me start off. I'm just gonna try making some toast and see what happens. Now you can use the tray or the rack. We've got both here. I think I'm gonna try making a piece of toast on both and see how they compare. I've got some white Wonder Bread, which usually does a good job of showing how well it toasts. Let's uh, stick one right on the rack here. Yeah, it does hold just about one piece of bread. Close it up. Now they say two minutes for light, three minutes for medium, and four for dark. We're gonna go medium to start off. We're already on the way here. There's a, a rather loud ticking sound. And it is heating up in there. Because it's kind of one of those twist timers, you're not really sure if you're exactly on three minutes or not. So it's kind of small. So I think I was around three minutes, so we shall see. I mean, it looks like it's pretty well toasted there already. I'm not sure how much time's left. It's gotta be almost done. I mean, where it's at now looks pretty good to me. Maybe I should just stop it. Cause that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of smoke coming out of here. That rack looks quite warm. Look at this first piece from the rack. The top is very even, happy with that. Now there's obviously gonna be rack marks in the bottom, which is understandable, but I'm gonna try one now with the tray itself. Now what's interesting about the tray is they say to flip it halfway through, but elsewhere in the instructions, they say don't open during the cooking process. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work. I should also point out that there's one temperature. It's 400 degrees, that's it. There's no temperature adjustment. It's 400 degrees, like it or not. I think I'm gonna use my stopwatch for a little bit more accurate timing. I'm gonna go in on the tray this time, close it up. I'm gonna go a minute and a half, flip it another minute and a half, and then we'll compare the tray versus the rack, and then whichever one's better, I'm using the rest of the time. Here we go, three-ish minutes, but I'm gonna stop after a minute and a half and flip it. We shall see. All right, we're at a minute and a half, let's flip it. Oh, look at that, the, that bottom is not done at all. Yeah, I can see a big difference on this one. I don't like having to flip it though. It's already kind of cramped in there. I have to use these tongs, kind of smash the bread a little bit. I don't really like the flipping process. I'd rather just use the rack and not have to worry about flipping it. We're at three minutes. You know, it actually is pretty good on the tray too, to be honest, even though I had to flip it, that's pretty even. In fact, the edge is a little bit almost burnt. I would say after the first test, I'm pretty happy with both of them, to be honest. I don't like that though. That's from when I had to use the, uh, the tongs to flip it. But otherwise, look how beautifully even that is. On the other hand, this one, if you don't mind the wire marks, didn't have to be flipped. So I think both did pretty well, to be honest. Next up, I'm gonna try probably the second most commonly reported item made in here, which is a half a bagel. I'm gonna try it on just the rack and we'll see what happens. I think I'm gonna go right in the middle with number three once again and see how that goes. Just for kind of a second opinion on time, I'm using my stopwatch for these tests as well. So I'm going three minutes whether that timer goes off or not. Unlike the first toast test, I'm getting smoke on this one. They said it might smoke after the first use, but this is the third use. Oh, it looks like it's burning. I gotta turn this off. It's burning. Oh, 
man, that didn't take long at all. I was only at two and a half minutes. It's already burning. Great. And it smells like it's burning too. Wow. Oh, that's burnt. That is not good. Three, two and a half minutes. Some people online were complaining the temperature control would be nice. Now I see why. Two and a half minutes. That is disappointing, but I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit and try another half bagel and see if I can get it right because that is not good. Man, I was looking forward to eating that bagel too. All right, well, I got another half to try here. All right, we're going back in. I will not be deterred. I'm literally gonna try like one minute and see what happens. Two and a half minutes is way too much. Let's try one a minute and see what happens. I'm just gonna watch it. I'm just gonna sit over here and watch it. We're at one minute. Let's check it out. All right, one minute, it's not really very toasted. Let's keep going. Something happened between one minute and two and a half minutes to burn this last time. I'm not gonna let it happen again. I say two minutes is good for this one. You're done. Two minutes, two and a half minutes. Big difference. I'm starting to get the idea this is not something you can just leave unattended, but it's so fast, maybe it's not really that big of a deal. I did open the oven after one minute for this one, so that's another reason there's probably a difference. I don't know. Let's break out the, uh, the thermal imager and take a look inside and see how warm it gets in there. Getting some readings in the 500s. Go right in the element itself. Just, it goes over it. 600, it's pretty warm in there. It's, it's pretty warm, it's pretty warm. The outside's hot too. They say it gets hot and it gets hot. They say not to touch the outside of it and I can see why. I would only touch this handle and pretty much nothing else. How about something even thinner like this half of an English muffin? Throw that in there, see what happens. I'm not even gonna worry about the timer. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crank it up, I'm gonna watch it. When it looks like it's brown, I'm gonna pull it out. But I will run my stopwatch just to see how long it takes. Pretty much have to sit over here and watch it. I imagine this is gonna be quick, as thin as that is. All right, we're at about two minutes and I'm starting to smell something. Let's see what we got here. Interestingly, I would say it's not as done as the bagel after two minutes. That's weird. Two minutes English muffin, two minutes bagel, but this has got a little bit of smoke coming off of it. I guess from, from right here in the end. I mean, this is about where I'd like it, but it's just weird that the time of two minutes here versus two minutes here is so different. All right, so I have a pretty good idea as far as all the different bread products, how it's gonna work. I really would just watch it. I'm not even gonna trust the timer because the timer is a dial. You're not really sure if you're at 215, at 145, right at two. It's kind of hard to tell. It's just better to watch it and see when it gets brown and then take it out. But I want to try one more thing here. They're showing on the packaging. They show a mini pizza going in there. Obviously, I'm going to have to use the tray because I don't want any cheese or anything spilling down to the heating element. All right, so I've got one of these little Red Baron pizzas here. I'm going to put it directly on the tray, which it barely fits, but it does fit. It's going to stick it right in here. Now the Red Baron instructions say 22 to 24 minutes at 375. This only goes up to 15 minutes. I'm just gonna crank it up and watch it when the cheese melts. We're gonna pull it out and see how it looks. So here we go. I'm gonna crank it all the way up. If this maxes out at 15 minutes. I can't imagine cooking anything in that heat for 15 minutes, but we shall see. I'm also curious if it's gonna cook the inside as well, or if it's just gonna burn the outside and leave the inside cold. I'm gonna keep an eye on this when the cheese starts to melt. I'm pulling out, cutting it open, and see what happens. All right, we're about five and a half minutes now. The top of it looks like it's getting kind of brown. I wonder how the inside's gonna look. I mean, the cheese does seem like it's kind of melted. It doesn't look burnt yet, and the cheese doesn't look real melted, so I'm gonna let it keep going. All right, at the uh, almost seven minute mark, it's getting kind of brown. I'm gonna pull it out of there. One small issue with this is it's just so cramped in there. From here to here is pretty brown. This side, not as much. Let's look at the bottom. Not so, not so brown. The problem with this is that if I keep cooking it, this is just gonna be completely burnt. All right, the unit's pretty warm. I'm gonna move it over here. I had to use my hot hands to get that out of the way. I use my Star Trek pizza cutter here. So the problem that I'm seeing with this one is you've got burnt edges on one side, not on this side. It's not real crispy on the bottom. The center is warm. I will say that at least. The center is, is warm. No cold spots. All right, so right here is dead center. It doesn't feel cold, but let me take a bite and see what happens. It, it, it's cooked. It, I'm, I'm actually surprised. It only took seven minutes as opposed to 22. So it is cooked. Hmm. All right, so as far as I can tell, the Dash Mini Toaster Oven does work. It seems especially effective on toasting bread, which that's pretty even, with or without being on the wire rack. I just think it came out uh, quite nice. Other types of breads, it was kind of all over the place, but you really have to just watch it. Because that heating element is cycling on and off, the, the amount of time almost seems to vary. 
It surprisingly worked for the mini pizza. I don't think that was quite as good as a full-size oven, but it was fast and it was cooked all the way through, so it did work. My only real concerns about this is that it's so hot and so fast, it's easy to burn something, so you really have to kind of watch it. I'm not even sure the timer is even really useful. It's almost just better off putting it in there and just watch it until it's done. Another thing I do like about it is that it has such a small footprint that it would really go well in very small spaces. It doesn't make a lot, but what it does do, it seems to do pretty well. But as far as I can tell, the Dash Mini Toaster Oven does work. If you've tried this or something like it, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.